All right, this may be a longer video. One of my supporters shared a video with me. I'm going to share that with you now, and then we'll talk about it on the other side. African American, we've interviewed, said they had to moderate their behavior so they weren't intimidated. I had a very candid conversation with one of the individuals who passed me this information. He broke it down. You're big, you're black, with a deep voice. You're intimidating. And if you want to move on, you have to do something about it. This week on 60 Minutes, we reported on racial bias in the military. From the rank and file to officers, African Americans in the Air Force say they are treated differently than their white counterparts. Major Daniel Walker is an F-22 pilot. On an Air Force program called Real Talk, hosted by Lieutenant General Brad Webb, he read comments made by other black pilots. I have a couple of quotes I want to read off. Uh, my fighter experience was the most demoralizing experience in my life, and I've been homeless. Uh, the second is, to be yourself and thrive in a fighter squadron as a black man is an oxymoron. Either conform or fail. These are my friends. These are my brothers. Uh, and my sisters, actually. Walker said... Let's deal with that comment first. I'll never understand why blacks join the military. I love her response. I never understand why blacks are still Christians. <laughs> Straight facts. Straight facts. Because if you still could be a Christian after all the evil is done to us, then you, you're built for any part of life. You're ready to deal with anything. But seriously, though, the military is made up of people from all walks of life. All walks of life. From doctors, lawyers, um, people who, who are um, decent folks to rapists and uh, abusers and gangbangers and skinheads, racists. You got everything in there. So if you think that uniform is going to change who they are, especially as they start getting more rank and learn how to play the game and get more power over you, then you're in for a rude awakening. This whole cliche about they're my brothers and sisters in arms eh, I'm sorry man that's a bunch of bullshit propaganda because in my experience it's been more like Game of Thrones there's been people who I've deployed with and served with that I didn't give a shit if they lived and died they didn't give a shit if I lived or died that's just the way it was period we didn't kill each other and that's just that's how it is that's how dark it could get in this military experience and you have to be built for that I'm going to tell you the same thing I tell my sons. There's not a job in America where you're not going to face racism. You can fold and cry and, and, and let that defeat you, or you can overcome that shit. Right? You can go into the military with the mindset of learning what you need to learn, and you will learn some things there. I didn't join the military because I was a patriot. I didn't join the military because I loved America. I joined the military because I didn't want to die in the hood. And even if I died as a soldier, my mom would have got the money. My death would have mean something. If I'd have died in the streets of Long Beach, California, man, in the 90s and 80s, it wouldn't even make the news. And that's just the raw facts of the situation. Because the military may have been hard, the hood was even harder. Far worse experience I've had in the hood. I dealt with racist cops pulling me over, telling me who the fuck you think they gonna believe, you or me. So come on, man. America is a racist country, period. And you have to be willing to overcome that shit if you want any type of lifestyle in this country. Because at the end of the day, it's beyond racism. We're all gonna deal with obstacles in this life, no matter what. We're, no matter what color you are, you're gonna deal with some obstacles. For black people, racism is one of the things that's been thrown in there. But guess what? Um, the queer community damn sure dealt with it as well. I serve with people who was in the queer community, right? Who had to hide their existence while they was in the military. Understand, this was don't ask, don't tell. And I told the people I served with, I didn't care if you were straight, as long as you shoot straight. I kept their secrets because I knew they would use that to throw them out. So there are obstacles for all of us, no matter if you're black, white, Hispanic, straight, gay, there's gonna be obstacles that we have to overcome. And there's been far more um, decent people that I've met in the military than bad ones. But understand, sometimes it could be heaven, and sometimes it could be absolutely hellish. You want to know what made it all worth it? 
This moment right here made it all worth it. Look at that picture right there and check that out. Look at the joy in my face, <laughs> right? That's real joy right there. That DB214 <sighs> is my best moment of my military career because it meant I was done. For the rest of my existence, that check is coming and those benefits are coming. Not only for me, but for my family. My son will never be in the damn ghetto wondering who gonna kill him over some well, the color shoes he wore. My daughter don't have to worry about getting attacked on the corner or getting shook down by crooked ass LAPD. That was worth it for me. That was worth all the bullshit I dealt with by giving them a chance, by turning my home into a sanctuary. I live in a good part of town. You know, why don't I deal with a lot of that nonsense? And that's why I became a soldier and that's why I stayed it. Racism, like everything else in this country, is an obstacle. You have to decide whether you're going to overcome that obstacle or you go allow that obstacle to defeat you. You're joining an organization that is designed to kill and destroy enemies in close combat. That takes a certain type of person. It takes a certain type of mentality to um, want to be in that lifestyle. And that's just what it is, especially if you're becoming a soldier or a Marine or something like that. People out here are going to be doing that type of stuff. So understand you're going to be dealing with in a, in an environment that is designed to weed you out. And if you can overcome that, you'll learn a lot more about how to adapt and overcome in any um, situation you find yourself in.